Well, the government has sure been making a lot of effort to promote entrepreneurship, innovation and economic growth via various policies and startups are eagerly anticipating this time's budget, particularly hopeful for the elimination of angel taxes and a lot of investments and ease of doing business and investing in the startup sector. Joining me to decode the budget wish list for the startup and private investment space, I have two very special guests joining in. Harshal Kamdar is the CFO at Peak 15 and we also have Sanjeev Bikchandani, co-founder and vice chairman at InfoEdge on the show. Well, first up, let me begin with Harshal Kamdar who is joining in. Harshal, thanks so much for taking time out to begin with. What would be the key uh, in the ask list or the wish list, if I may, from the VC industry as a whole and from Peak 15? The startup sector, this government has indeed done a lot for the startups across the last 10 plus years. And uh, what we would love to see is uh, more and more of the same. Uh, we've had constant uh, engagement and requests with many sectors of, with many uh, uh, places in the government. And they have heard us with, uh, you know, open eyes and ears. Uh, the top three requests that the startup industry, you know, would be relevant to create an impetus or, you know, take the startup industry further uh, would be as follows. The first one would be on reverse flipping. Uh, like you would many Indian unicorns are domiciled outside of India and they are looking to return their domicile to India to both access Indian capital markets or because they believe this is the right structure because the future is going to be in India. Typically, when a foreign entity does a merger into India, they go through an NCLT route, which takes anywhere from 12 to 14 months. And this creates a lot of uh, unease in running operations because the management is focused on getting NCLT or court approvals and so on. There is actually a section under the Indian Companies Act, which allows a holding company to merge into a subsidiary company under a fast track route. Uh, we would believe uh, you know, that foreign companies, foreign holding companies should also be covered. And we would love if the finance ministry clarifies that in the budget, that the fast track merger route, where a merger could close within three months, instead of the current 12 to 14 months, would be a big blessing. Uh, because like, you know, Awan, time is actually the only limited commodity that all of us actually have. It's not money, it's not wealth. Um, it's not uh, uh, knowledge, it's just time. And time in the life of a startup would significantly add to everything else that it's uh, the, that, that is on the purpose of the startup. So that is one. The second ask is relating to angel tax. India is the only country in the world where infusion of share capital into a company or a startup is subject to tax. Of course, the government and the finance ministry has paid heed to a lot of noise and representations, and there have been exceptions and exemptions. But what we would request for the benefit of the startup industry, that the act of taxing or infusion of share capital into a company in itself be done away with. And if that is not the case, and if the finance ministry decides uh, in its wisdom that angel tax is indeed an important tax avoidance uh, a provision, then what we would request is to give the same status to registered foreign AIFs. So for example, if I'm a registered foreign AIF in, in a country that IOSCO allows, uh, then it should have the same status as a domestic AIF. So, Harshal, just as the government has really prioritized financial inclusion, do you think that it should now focus on technological inclusion in order to propel India to the next stage of growth? So, India over the last 10 years has been significantly buzzing, whether it's developments on the telecom infrastructure, whether it's developments in tech as a whole. Uh, as we see us getting from Tier 1 on metros to Tier 2, Tier 3 and, and more, uh, you know, parts of India. Yes, a focus on tech inclusion or using tech the right way uh, would indeed take this country 
uh, you know, leaps and bounds forward in terms of GDP, in terms of uh, development as well as growth over the next 10 plus years. And what's the sense that you get when it comes to deep tech policy and the kind of funding that we've seen here? What more needs to be done? The deep tech policy, the deep tech sector in itself uh, has been significantly buzzing. Uh, in fact, at peak 15, a large part of our investment focus, etc., has been on deep tech and AI over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. And the government has, including programs like Startup India, uh, supporting uh, deep tech significantly, uh, in, including investments in semiconductors and so on. Sure, and given that, Harshal, we have seen AI, hyperscale computing, all of that really positioning India as a preferred destination. What more do you think needs to be done in this vein in terms of cybersecurity, IT staffing, sourcing solutions, etc.? You know, India is a land of multitudes and, um, you know, whatever uh, the world has or what the world says, uh, India produces things that are different uh, purely from a demographic standpoint, purely from a consumer power spending standpoint, etc. We are ticking all the right boxes to be, you know, one of the most relevant countries, if not the most relevant country uh, in the decade. And... Um, from a hypercomputing AI, look, I mean, there are there are two ends of the spectrum. One end of the spectrum is, uh, is this just incremental, i.e., you know, Excel macros and formulas and if then else becoming AI. And the second one is, uh, the other end of the spectrum is, are we at the cusp of something extremely life-changing, uh, at least in the tech ecosystem, which will change the way we work, which will change the way we uh, interact with each other and so on and so forth. And uh, we as venture capital investors are right in are right in between. And we get to see so many startups or look at so many startups in the country, which are doing things that you could never imagine in the last five years, you know, could be done. So we are very excited about the opportunity. And we believe especially AI tailor-made to the Indian ecosystem uh, or to the Indian, for example, uh, there are there are companies that focus on Indian languages that, that we've invested in, um, you know, that, that could change the way the tech ecosystem looks over the next five to 10 years. You know, in India, working under the regulatory protocols is sometimes a bit of a tedious process. Do you think that we can see some sort of a a smoother transition or improvement in the ease of doing business, especially when it comes to investing in startups? Yeah, you've touched on, you know, a very important, a very um, mundane, but an extremely important or a crucial topic, especially for foreign investors looking to invest in India. Uh, as India progresses, you the canvas of investors looking to invest in India, both, of course, domestically as well as from offshore, would increase significantly. And we would request the government to put in simple and easy measures, again, to save a lot of time and effort. Uh, for example, electronic signatures could be made mandatory for all government uh, filings, which would completely reduce the tension of getting a signature, you know, somewhere 12 and a half hours away and so on. While this seems a very mundane and a process point, I can tell you a lot of billion dollar plus IPOs could get stuck, you know, for want of a signed paper even now. So we would love for the government to implement this in, in spirit and letter. Uh, the second piece, which has been a niggle for foreign investors, is whenever a foreign investor makes an investment, the Indian company needs to make a filing with the Reserve Bank of India uh, under what we call as the automatic route. However, if the company fails to make the filing or if there are errors, the foreign investor actually can potentially not have proper title to the shares from a foreign exchange law standpoint. This creates significant difficulty for the foreign investor to exit. What we would love uh, for the government, the RBI and the finance ministry to consider is to allow the foreign investor to make the filing directly, okay? or to have visibility so that it can track, it is responsible for its own compliance and title and so on, versus leaning in on the Indian company to do it. And this especially becomes a large challenge when there are a bunch of foreign investors who've come across many years 
you know, and if there is a problem with say one filing, everybody else gets stuck in the queue. So this again, you know, sorting this niggle itself could, you know, if if the ease could make the reduce the unease of doing business by a significant degree for most foreign investors, especially the ones who are not used to making many investments in India. You know, in India, working under the regulatory protocols is sometimes a bit of a tedious process. Do you think that we can see some sort of a, a smoother transition or improvement in the ease of doing business, especially when it comes to investing in startups? India actually is at the center point of build in India, build for the world and build in India for India. We have seen a lot of emphasis over the last 18 to 24 months on, on sectors, you know, that you would earlier never imagine, um, you know, investors in tech, for example, in manufacturing. Uh, and we've seen a great boost, the schemes introduced by the government, including PLI, etc. We've seen a great impetus, um, uh, you know, given to some of our companies that are on the uh, that are on the, on the periphery or that are doing things on in traditional sectors. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, India continues to remain uh, focused both on global markets. So there are many companies in our portfolio that are building in India, but building for the world. Whereas there are many that are building in India, relying on Indian demographic and relying on the Indian consumer uh, to build for India itself. And what's the long haul then, if you could leave us with some parting words on your projections um, for the Indian tech sector? Yeah, I mean, I've been, you know, based here in India for all my life. And I've been a big believer in terms of the inflection point or the moment has come. And it so seems that it indeed, you know, has come in the next decade or so. We'll see growth on two counts. One, of course, on, you know, consumer the spending power and all the good things that economists say from a conventional economic uh, sense standpoint. And then, uh, you know, there's Moore's law or significant geometrical progression or significant compounding. Uh, all the good things that we've done over the last many years will yield fruit. You know, it will seem like one inflection point or one point, but it's all the good things that many people in the ecosystem have done over many years. We are very likely to see that, you know, inflection point, hopefully in the next three to five years, if not uh, in the next decade, which would take India, you know, to its rightful uh, glory or, or what have you, it deserves um, yeah, in, in the right way. Thanks so much for joining in, Harshal. It's been a pleasure having you on board. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.